going to talk about the um, the soil health stewards action plan that you all have heard speakers allude to. And I want to start out by saying you all have heard us say that this is the sixth training, sixth soil health stewards training that's gone on around the country. And what makes this unique is the grazing and rangeland focus of that. You, Bianca definitely helped with some of the basics that wasn't specific to uh, grazing um, specifically, um, but the, the, you, you've seen us bring in producers and, and other you know, supporting speakers that do give that lens. So when we knew we were gonna do, be doing this grazing focus and this last application process, we opened up the, um, the application to not just a region, but the entire country and said, this was gonna be focusing on grazing. So some of you, I, the numbers keep changing a little bit. We have 39 entities. I'm gonna say that like 30 of these entities have already come through this in their region. Maybe you did it in the mid-Atlantic. Maybe your entity was involved in the Southeast or mid-Atlantic, I mean, Midwest or West. So when we thought about this, we were like, oh my gosh, are we gonna get them to do another action plan? And after speaking with our funder and internally, we said, yes. So in that application process, your entity agreed that you would come to a four day training, that you would submit another action plan. You're gonna see through this presentation and through the, the last presentation tomorrow that we've set it up as having some uh, check-in meetings and then there's a, an evaluation process. What I didn't, what we didn't see is that the entities are extremely smart and sent new staff, right? So you're not, there's only 20 staff in this space that has already gone through this. According to our numbers, it could be a little different on either side, 19 or 21. Um, and all that to say, <clears throat> and some of you may not have even heard of an action plan before. So I'm gonna treat this as the first time you've ever heard it, but I want you to realize that we realize that you've already, some of you have already submitted an action plan and some of you are new to this space and have not. So we've got a couple of, we've got a little curve of learning. And so we're gonna give the information and then we're gonna support you in any way that you need in order to get that action plan uh, written and, uh, and, and worked on and um, by the end of the, the year evaluated. So I'm gonna start with the fact that um, one thing, if you scroll down, if you scroll underneath this video screen, we have pasted the um, uh, action plan guidelines here for you. If you've gotten your packet, it's in there as well. And those guidelines include things like the description of an action plan, some due dates, and then some suggestions on what could be in your action plan. And in the past, we've had people express anxiety around these action plans. I work full time, I'm in the monitoring season. This is new to me, what the heck am I supposed to be doing? The action plan is simply an organizing tool that provides a roadmap to what you want to do with what you've just learned and what you're going to continue to learn tomorrow. How are you going to bring this back to your organization? Uh, how are you going to, you know, you all applied for the, your entities applied for this because there's an interest with you to take uh, your services that you provide to your farmers and landowners a step further, right? So in this space of soil health, um, you've learned the basics, you've learned some language, you learned today about what that could look like in the easement world, what NRCS, potential NRCS um, services are available to you. In this action plan, if the purpose is for you to explore more of that and to put on the ground some of the outreach and the support, the support that some of your landowners and farmers might 
have requested, might know not know that they want to request yet, but that they're, you know, they've expressed interest. This is an opportunity for you to, to move the needle in your space around soil health. And the action plan is a is just a suggestion for us from us to do that. Now I say suggestion. You all, I don't know how many of you saw the letter of agreement or you know what what it took for you to get here, but all your organizations have received a ten thousand dollar grant to to participate in this program. That money is going to be distributed three times in three different ways. One, oh thanks, there. And um, maybe Jamie can help um, find those guidelines um, and put them in the chat. Um, that that ten thousand dollars is to help support your time here. It's to help support uh, outreach that you might want to do. You've heard a couple of people talk about field days. You've heard people talk about websites. You've heard people talk about um, anything from, you know, uh, a, a newsletter article to maybe paying for some tests in the field for some uh, for some of your farmers and, and landowners. So I want to reduce, you know, again, my experience here, sixth cohort, Everybody kind of gets like this. I don't, I don't know what I can accomplish in a year. The action plan is a, is something that we're going to check in on, on a regular basis. And it's checking in on the progress, not the completion. So we want you to think about an action plan as something that's going to work for you. It is not to satisfy us. It is a, it is a play. It is a thing and a, and a, an organizing tool that we hope you will use to, to again, move your soil health needle forward. So with this slide that's on now, it really is talking about the, the it being a roadmap. Um, I, you know, I'm gonna, in those guidelines, we remind you to think about Chris's presentation yesterday about those touch points. You know, it's not just your monitoring staff. You can, you can educate your board, you can educate other staff, your leadership, you can work at it from an acquisition point of view, an easement, a, a stewardship point of view, or even that untethered, like you've got other things going on in your land trust and public program point of view. So whatever, we're not going to prescribe buckets, we're not going to prescribe actions, um, we're not even going to like collect receipts based on your information you know the 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 ten thousand dollars comes in again three different different payments one's already one's in process one gets distributed once your action plan is given to us and then the last one is when that about when you have returned that action plan with a uh, list of progress on the things that you have indicated in that action plan so for those of you who have not seen what i'm talking about Next week, probably, Jamie and I are talking about it this morning, it's either going to be Wednesday or Thursday, you're going to get a follow-up email from us. And in that follow-up email, you're going to get an Excel sheet that looks like this. And we ask for it in Excel because we smushed them all together uh, at, some, at the evaluation process. And we learned the hard way that some people use Word and some people use PDF and some people use Excel. We're asking you to use Excel. And it's going to look like this. The first thing, the first part that you're going to do is this yellow part. What do you plan to do? See how basic this is? You organize it the way you want. If it's, if your organization works by tasks and by quarter or by day or by person, however you want to organize this, we suggest that you kind of get your mind around which touch point you're using, the proposed action, tasks for completion, and your proposed timeline. You write that however you want, but there's going to be use use those guidelines and the discussion here, and we're going to have another discussion at the end of the day tomorrow about some of the thoughts that you have to put into an action plan. You're, I guarantee you tomorrow afternoon, you're both going to be tired and completely inspired and ready to get going. So it's one of the, what do you, what do you want to do with what you've learned? You're going to put that in these yellow parts of the Excel sheet that I just mentioned. This is a sample. This is a very, very small sample of an action plan that was um, that was sent at one point. Um, and it's, you know, these the, the 
this is part of an action plan, you guys, this thing went on and on. And so they, you know, they had a proposed action, task for completion, and then a proposed timeline. I'm gonna get this done in the second quarter. You know, again, you start your soul health journey starts this week. And we've got you in an April cohort. So April, 2024 to April, 2025, you are on your soil health journey with your action plan where you have access to us you have access to materials. You can ask Bianca any question you want. You can do that afterwards too, but you're the cohort right now and that you've got her attention, which is a valuable resource. At the end of, of around April, 2025, this blue part, again, when you get this action plan, you're gonna see the yellow part and the blue part. You don't have to worry about the blue part right now, but you can think about it and you can write your actions as you're thinking about how you might report on that. And those are going to include what actions were taken, what date, just optional. Um, are those actions ongoing or one time? Like, did you have a field day and you're never going to do it again? Or are you having a field day and you're going to try to do it every year? Just your, your thoughts. Um, approximate numbers of uh, uh, farmer, landowners, and staff reached during that time. Again, you know, we, we ask you to do that um, to the best of your ability. And then the number, the approximate number of acres that that might impact. And again, do the best you can. And then we would love some reflections on your um, experience. You met Gabrielle yesterday and Gabrielle she mentioned that she has met with several of you before because you've already gone through, you know, there are people in this room who have already done their action plan, gone through their initial soil health journey and that book is closed. That is going to open again for this next year. There are some people in this room who were in a training last October and have just now started on their like really getting traction on their action plan. There's another cohort that is completing their evaluation this month. So you know where you are in that stratification, if you will. Um, and so Gabrielle's gonna loop back around to this particular cohort. And when I, the reason I'm mentioning this is because that reflections of your experience is something um, that we look forward to. So wrapping this up, um, I, the, for those of you who do not know, we provide uh, everybody in your mail, snail mail packet, if you received your snail mail packet, um, there's a sample of this folder. It's a, called a soil health stewardship folder. Um, it's about this big. It's a half of a, it's a in half, eight and a half by 11. That big green square in the middle of that, of this um, photo is a cutout in that folder for you to brand this information yourself, right? You're gonna put your logo, your name, whatever you wanna say so that it's facing out because this is gonna, it, it's provided, we provide it to everybody who comes through this program as a something to help collect the information that you might wanna give to the people you're doing outreach to. That's what I'm explaining the picture on this first as, as that you will see that in the follow-up that you can order those and we will send those out because this training is happening in mid-April, we've set May 30th as the date to complete your action plan. That, so you haven't, you know, you have until then, we'll remind you again, that second distribution begins. If there is something in between now and then that is, you have already, you're thinking in your mind, OMG, I've got a conference, you know, I'm planning this conference, just talk to us. That deadline is, you, just talk to us. Um, once you're done with those action plans, and again, you're going to get several emails about this, you're going you're to email those to me. And then we're going to file them. And we've already set the two check-in meetings for this cohort. And these are hard dates to write, but that's September 17th, 2024 and January 28th, um, 2025. For those of you who have not experienced a check-in meeting, those are two hours long in the afternoon to accommodate West Coast, East Coast. We come into a room, it's on Zoom. This is the only time you'll be on Excel events. You'll come into Zoom. And the very first thing we do is a round robin to listen to how, what, how people are doing with their action plan. And those are really powerful places to be because when you hear the collective movement of what people are doing, it, I just, I, I, maybe 
I'd like to think that everybody gets inspired by that. I know I do. Um, and so those are the two check-in meetings that are gonna happen this year. Um, we are going to talk about this more in follow-up, but there is a soil health stewards toolkit. So when you're sitting here thinking, oh my gosh, I've just had four days of intensity, Monday, you know, then I'm gonna have a weekend on Monday, I'm supposed to remember all of this and do an action plan. There's a couple of things. We're gonna, because this is our sixth go around, there is already a pretty, a pretty robust toolkit developed with not only recordings and slide decks, but also links to things that people have mentioned. Just like this training when people say, I think this is a great resource or Bianca throws something out. We've tried to put those all together in a toolkit. You're gonna have access to that. You're also gonna have access to this platform for an entire month. Like we're gonna turn it off after the action plans have been uh, sent in. And you'll use the same link you've always used. You're gonna come in when you click training sessions Instead of seeing something to join, you're going to see every single session with a recording button. Now, we set these up with the three hour blocks, right? So that we're, you know, we're offering that you're going to have to move your cursor through, you know, those aren't the end, those are unedited videos that are going to be available to you, but you have full access to them in case you just want to find something. In the meantime, we are going to be editing those, we're going to be taking apart those three hour pieces and editing, editing that video into session specific videos that we will share probably, hopefully, hopefully before the first check-in meeting, but at the very latest before the check last, the first check-in meeting, you'll have Bianca's uh, uh, basics from Tuesday that if you write in your action plan, I'd like, you know, my, I'd like to have a lunch and learn with my other, with my colleagues and show Bianca's video. That's a perfectly legitimate action item. Can't be the only action item, but it could be, a, it's legitimate for sure. So just know that you're, you're not alone. Uh, you're going to have access to the recordings. You, um, have, complete open access to any of the team that you've met um, this week. And tomorrow I will mention one last resource and that is an online virtual community that includes non members. We'll talk about that again tomorrow. Non members that have gone through this in a, in a virtual community where they, you can ask people from other cohorts questions. So we just really, we really built up a lot of resources so that that anxiety level will come down from, oh my gosh, how am I going to fit this into my work to, I can do this. You know, you know, you see the, you see the opportunities of the work that you're already doing. How can I incorporate, um, that's incorporate. How can you incorporate, um, so what you've learned here this week in that. Um, so I see it's 615 and I am, sh I think that was my last slide. What I have done in the past is pulled in a person from the cohort before to talk about their action plan. But because this, this is about grazing specifically, I did reach out to several of you who have been through this and have are in varying various levels of action plan progress. So I don't, I'm not gonna go over time, but for the next 15 minutes, I wanna call on um, these five folks who um, have said that they'll come on and I want them to share just what they want to share. What was challenging? What was most ins inspirational? Was the Were the check-in meetings good for you? Um, how was the support from AFT? You know, um, um, and I'm going to call on them one at a time so that you can hear from not me, saying that your anxiety level should come down, you're going to hear from other folks um, that have already gone through this about how they um, how they navigated through this. So, um, and then if you have questions, specific questions about any of this, please continue using the chat. But Melanie um, Palvis, I'm going to call on you first and you guys, let's watch the time. Um, I, you know, two to three minutes of uh, just some pointers. Um, about to the group that um, is going to embark on their action plan um, here shortly. 
Thanks, Beth. Um, oh, thank you, you Melanie. Can hear me okay? Yes. <laughs> um, well, especially hearing what um, what you just described today, I think um, it really brought to my attention that we we did um, um, a much better job than I initially thought we did. And we're a small land trust um, with very little farming or agriculture background uh, to begin with. And um, going through the, the training prior, especially for uh, production farming, I guess, or, or farming uh, with soil health, um, it was a little daunting. And um, I think we, um, we bit off more than we could chew in, in that we put too many items on our action plan because we were excited and we didn't uh, achieve several of those or we we started on several but didn't finish but um, overall what we did was we created um, a habit of thinking about soil health and bringing that topic up whenever we're doing presentations on um, with landowners or, or groups or in our monitoring visits so it created that habit which I think is most important um, and then, and of course, we incorporated it into our website and uh, our newsletters, that sort of thing. And um, for example, one of the things we had on there was to host a um, landowner workshop where we, we would discuss it. And that just didn't work out. And that's okay, I think, because um, it's still on our radar. Um, it takes a lot of effort, especially for uh, two staff members in the land trust. Um, but like I said, er, almost every other item that we had listed, we at least started it. And I think that's important because like I said, it created that habit. Thank you, Melanie. That's great. I love the, I love creating habits. Um. <laughs> <laughs> good habits. How about that? Creating good habits. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, Tessa Dowling, do you want to give us any pointers? Give your colleagues any pointers? Thank you, Melanie. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks, Melanie. It's great to hear. I will say, um, first off, about the check ins, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was wonderful to hear the breadth of different ideas people were coming at this like the different angles you can come at this is infinite um and i just got a lot of new ideas like and so where i'm at i was part of the october of last year cohort so i'm still um executing or trying to execute our action plan um, we might also find that we were a little too ambitious but um our angle was mostly focusing on uplifting stories of local farmers who are doing great job with soil health through our newsletters and then having local events at local um, at farms and inviting community members to see those practices um, is kind of the angles we've been taking. But just hearing from different organizations is great because people are coming at it from the grant, giving grants out to land uh, to farmers to yeah, educating their staff and boards. Um, so that's what I've really enjoyed is learning from other groups. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, Hannah Espinosa, what you got? <laughs> Hi. So I um, I think for us, I remember last year kind of getting this template and thinking, oh gosh, like, I don't know what to put on it. Um, and it seemed a lot more difficult than it was. But when we really got into the weeds of it, it was actually really helpful for us to sit down after the training and talk about the ways that we thought this would really be helpful for our landowners and the ways that they would most benefit from it. Um, I agree. I think maybe we might have been potentially a little over ambitious, um, but happy that we did put it in writing because it gives us something to maybe shoot for. Maybe it didn't happen this year, but it can still happen just maybe on a different timeline. So, and as far as our landowners, they were most receptive to kind of the continued information we put in the newsletters and on our social media and stuff like that, that we had these resources. 
And we didn't necessarily bug them about it, but we just kind of kept reminding them that they were there. And so when they did actually think like maybe they needed it, they reached out to us during site visits or via emails and were like, hey, I kind of vaguely remember you mentioning this, like, can we actually chat about this? And I think that for us, it was the constant reminder that we were a resource and had this information to share with them that was we felt most successful in that, that it was very exciting when somebody actually reached out to us and said, hey, I want to talk about all of these things. So um, for us, it was just kind of reiterating over and over again that we could help them. Excellent, excellent point. All, all of you are making excellent points, um, and I hope it's helping those of you who sit on the brink of writing an action plan. Um, Emily Dunn, do you have any pointers? Yeah, I mean, I agree with everything that's already been said. Um, I was a part of the October cohort, so we're still very much in the middle of putting our plan into action. Um, my biggest advice would be um, we were a little intimidated as well when we were first putting the action plan together. Um, we're a one county land trust, so we're a pretty small staff. Um, but I think what was most helpful to us was to start by thinking about in what ways are we already interacting with farmers and landowners and how can we incorporate soil health into those interactions we're already having. Um, and then from there it became a, a lot easier to think about ways that we can incorporate it um, you know, into the work we're already doing and start to expand beyond that. So that would be my, my biggest advice is when you're starting out, um, think about the ways you're already interacting with those landowners and how can you bring soil health to those conversations. You'd think we'd scripted this. You guys are perfect. Um, and then finally, um, before I call, if there's, I'm going to call on one last person. Um, but if I don't call on you and you've done this and you want to say something, we, it's, we've, we got a little bit of time. So, um, and if you also have questions, so just get those, get your mind around that for the next um, seven minutes or so. Alyssa Clarita, did you, will you round us out? I will round us out. I'm staring into the black box that is my computer. <laughs> You're all up here. Okay. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. Luckily, everybody um, has already gone before me and covered a lot of the same, the same thoughts we had in this process. Um, I will say we took a pretty conservative approach this year because we just have a lot going on, as I'm sure a lot of you do as well and limited capacity to, capacity to go all in on soil health. Um, but this last year, we really focused on getting educated internally and building partnerships with entities who are working on soil health in our region. Luckily, in Western Colorado, we have some really excellent resources and we have a lot of um, building capacity and programs at a statewide level. And so we almost didn't pursue another year, but um the state of colorado soil health program has really hit the ground running and they reached out to us interested in working closely with us and connecting them to landowners potentially inviting them along on our um, field visits when we're monitoring and they would provide a lot of really targeted technical assistance to landowners and we would sort of serve as the conduit and so that ignited us and excited us to do another round of the soil health grant. As far as the logistics of the action plan, like I said, we were pretty conservative, but I also felt really encouraged by Beth and the other folks at AFT um, in the constant reminders that this is not a contract. And so we had a few items on there that were like total pie in the sky goals that we didn't end up um, pursuing, but it was a really neat brainstorming opportunity to think of all of the ways that we might someday want to serve our landowners. For example, we had an item on there that was create a video of a landowner with conserved property um, doing excellent soil health work. We didn't do that. Um, and there's quite, like I said, quite a few entities that have done that work in the region. So we also kind of felt like it wasn't really needed at this point. Um, but I personally would encourage you to uh, just explore, brainstorm, and put whatever the heck like ideas you have in this action plan. 
knowing that reasonably you're not going to get to all of that and that's okay. And um, yeah, big thank you to AFT for facilitating this grant and making the process pretty straightforward and um, not much of a of a cumbersome process for us when, you know, like all of you, we have so much going on and um, managing another program is theoretically would take up a lot of brain space, but AFT makes it um, a really smooth process. So um, yeah, the action plan, we're excited to update it again for another year. Fantastic. Um, seriously, thank you all so much. Um, so with the five minutes that we have left, um, is there anybody that has come through an, their, their action plan? I, I think of Frank in Pennsylvania. Um, I, are anybody else who's come through their action plan that wants to share something with the group or and or is are there any questions from people who have already done an action plan about this specific action plan? I'm not letting you go early. We will sit here in a very quiet room for five minutes. And she means it. <laughs> she means it. Me, she means it. I will sing to you again. Okay, thank you, Emily. I guess I will ask a question. Um, I know we're probably a small fraction of the group that's in this situation, but I was wondering if you had any recommendations for folks that are currently in the middle of an action plan and going to be creating a new action plan so we'll kind of have two overlapping um just wondering if you have any recommendations for us as we navigate that and and what you would recommend there yeah chris do you want to what, what comes to your mind first i know what comes to mind um i think what comes to my mind is that this next action plan that you're doing is more focused on grazing or pasture or what are the who are the either additional landowners or what what from this training are you taking away that would result in something beyond what you already proposed in your past one that would be my thinking beth i don't know if that tracks with absolutely going to say yeah, absolutely. The other thing that came to mind while you were talking, Chris, is that this is if you've got an overlapping opportunity, there's an opportunity to, 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 talk, to talk about the differences between the, the systems, you know, so if you're doing, you know, social media, if you're educating, now you have a little bit more information to say, that's for this system and there's new, you know, you would, there's new things over here. So it gives you, a, a, you know, an opportunity to use that. Anybody else? Oop, Hannah. Hi. So um, this is the second time that our agency has done this training, but uh, Aline Smith and I, this is our first go around. Our colleagues who did um, the original go around, uh, people have had promotions and we've changed capacity and we're looking at their old action plan to see if we can kind of expand upon it a little bit but because we're new and we've got more staff so we have more capacity to execute some of the things from the first plan i think we're just wondering how much um do we have to come up with something entirely new can we build upon what we've done before this is a little tricky because we just have so much more capacity as an agency to um execute anything from an action plan than we might have a year ago when our uh, colleagues did this last year. Yeah, well, that's good news. And maybe you're in line for a raise now, right? Because everybody else got moved up, you know, the, the action plan. So that's a, that's a joke. Um, but I'm hoping, right? Fingers crossed. Um, I would, uh, um, Chris, you can correct me, but I would say um, expand upon what you've already got. Um, you know, don't. there's no need to reinvent any wheels here. Um, or you can pitch it if you want to start over. So, you know, use, I know that's not super helpful in terms of whittling it down, um, but that was- so What about things that maybe were proposed in the first plan that I think is a great idea, but we, as an agency, didn't get around to uh, the first go around, but I personally would like to see to fruition this time. 
Um, I'm nine months into my role, so I'm new. I wasn't here the last time my colleagues went through this, so I'm I'm here to expand capacity and um, enact some of those things. So is that yeah. acceptable to uh, finish I can tell you, things yep. proposed? <laughs> I can tell you right now that I'm not going to, we're not going to get an action plan from you and be like, oh, they've already, they've already said that they were going to do this and they didn't. There's no comparison where there's, we're not going to line them up or anything. I do see what time it is. I hope that helped Hannah and Chris. I'm yeah, just thank gonna, you. Okay. I'm going to close it off and give it back to you. 